and we have a stirring thought. My prayer is that it'll stir you up wherever you are. If you're just waking up which uh, or going to work or if you're just enjoying a vacation day, thank the Lord we have great hope today. We have a living God. Job 19, our Savior, our Redeemer is alive today and in our hearts. And I uh, just want to encourage us today about this thought about revival. And, and uh, so, Lord, bless these words today. Lord, may they be your words. May they just fill our hearts with joy, peace, strength, wisdom. Thank you, Father, that you're going to give us a double portion today. That's our prayer. Give us a double portion of who you are, not just grace for the day, but uh, a overabundant thanksgiving for the day. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to look with you today just for a few minutes in Psalm 85 and uh, just thinking about revival and just looking at our nation, looking at the world today. Uh, this has been a, a prayer of many of us for many, many years, uh, some maybe all their lives. And maybe we could even get tired of hearing that word revival. Lord, bring us revival. And, uh, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting and then just wondering, God, are you hearing our prayer? Well, just looking forward to 2021, I've just been looking back at 2020 and we've all had quite a, quite a year. And God has been faithful to us in many ways, countless ways, actually. And he will remain faithful in this, in this upcoming year. But just to think for a minute, you know, about revival and uh, to revive something that's either dying or maybe something that is already dead. God brings it back to life. He puts new breath in the lungs. <clears throat> maybe it's something that is dying, maybe something that is getting hard or that is uh, getting complacent or getting discouraged. God can pour fresh oil, uh, Psalm 92, into our hearts again. But there's one thing about revival, I think a concept we may have, like many natural thinking ways that we may have, is when we think about Christ and his ways, um, you know, Ecclesiastes talks about it in chapter 6, to consider the work and the ways of the Lord. Uh, he's the one that makes the ways that are crooked straight. And if he decides to keep it crooked, <clears throat> the ways, he will keep it crooked because he is sovereign. But when we think about revival, revival is messy. Revival is unpredictable, I think. There are some predictable points, but I think revival is very messy. And I think sometimes as Christians, we can want things to go a certain way and to uh, go according to our, you know, our plan, our suggestion. Uh, we want God, in so many words, to follow our plan rather than we following God's plan. But in Psalm 85, we see that revival is messy. It's messy. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, a farmer, when he looks at the prairie, he, or he may enjoy, you know, the beautiful rolling hills, and he may say, oh, that's such a beautiful, serene place that I can sit and look and watch how the birds come and go, and the wind cascades on the prairies, and it's a beautiful, peaceful place. But we may look at it that way, but a farmer looks at it very different. He may look at that prairie and say, this is a great place for potential fruit. It's a great place for potential harvest. And this is what revival is all about, is God breaks up that fallow ground in Hosea 10, 12, and he sows. He is sowing something. And we know in Hosea 10, 12, if, as you sow righteousness, you will reap mercy. So think about that just as we, uh, we will get to Psalm 85 in a minute. But revival is messy because the excavator or that plow has to come into that still maybe that quiet place and it breaks up the ground there's a lot of noise there's a lot of commotion there's a lot of breaking up these chunks of untouched ground or clods of dirt why because the ground must be prepared for the seed the ground must be prepared for the seed and this is why revival is messy and i think in our nation i think in our hearts i think in our own lives personally God is excavating these places that are unfruitful in our lives because he wants to prepare us for the seed. 
for the seed of the Word of God, for the seed of righteousness, for the seed of joy, for the seed of expectation. We know the greatest seed is the Word of God. It's the quality of, of the precious Bible that we hold in our hands, the ultimate love letter. Well, a lot of us, we want to maybe live our quiet Christian lives without risk and without noise and without upsetting or disturbances. But God says revival follows the plow. Tozier said that. Revival follows the plow. Where I must bring whatever it is to the next level so there's fruit. Right now, our world may be uh, upside down, and it's good in a lot of ways. Not naturally, maybe there's fear, uh, maybe there is anxiety. And that, I think, is part of trying to control the plow in our lives. Uh, we are short-sighted. We're only seeing what we see, what's being disturbed, what's being broken up. And we lose sight of the long-sightedness of faith that says, okay, this ground is being broken up so seed can be added. This ground in my heart is being broken up so that God can add what I don't already have. This seed in our hearts are being broken up so that we can experience God in a fuller way. And that's my prayer for all of us in 2021, is that we would experience God in a fuller way. So don't worry about the excavator. The excavator or the plow, revival follows the plow. Because if you throw the seed on just plain dirt, guess what? The seed cannot burrow down and take root. It cannot, uh, in Matthew 13, it cannot germinate. It cannot uh, produce. It must go into the ground and die and then bear and to expose the, the fruit that we, the seed, so it, it can expose the potential of what it's made for. So think about that to you today. There is, there, you may have disturbances in your life. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a uh, an, an external thing with your house or your finances or your health. Revival follows that plow. God is breaking up that ground so that he can add more of himself. 85.6 says, Will you not revive us again for thy people may rejoice in you? Show us thy mercy. So this is a great point here. Psalm 30, um, I, we see here in Ezekiel 37 very similarly will you not revive us again? And the Lord is like, I want to bring you deeper. I want to make those calm places a broken, noisy, upsetting place so that I can add something deep so that there is a harvest, so that there is life, so that there is uh, something that will feed other people. You know, if we think that faith is predictable, uh, then we don't know what faith is. Today, maybe you're considering your day, your schedule, you're maybe already into your day. Think about this. Don't, don't despise the disruptions. Don't despise the chaos. Don't despise uh, the, the, uh, the strange things that may be happening. Why? Because God is saying your response to those things, your response to me, going vertical with those things, will be like that plow in Hosea 10, 12. You're breaking up that fallow ground. Those grinders are going into the dirt. It's digging down and it's preparing a place for seed. It's preparing a place for a more fervent prayer life. It's preparing a seed to experience the grace of God in a fresh, anointed way. Well, uh, we see here in Ezekiel 37, uh, a passage maybe that's uh, familiar to us. Verse seven through 17, we see a valley of dry bones and God is breathing into that place saying, I'm going to bring you back to life. And, you know, there's been five great revivals over our history uh, since the 1700s. And usually they're followed by a few, uh, you know, a few patterns of things that have gone on. Well, we see that there is a great prayer. There's a man or woman of God that is praying and has a fervent heart. And God is giving a personal revival in us first before there's a corporate revival and then a national revival and then a worldwide revival. God is burning something in your and my heart. And he's like, be with me, talk to me, meditate with me, consider me. Don't think too small 
about what I'm saying. And a man or woman, they're praying with God intensely, intentionally. They're prevailing in prayer. There is this idea uh, where uh, we don't let go of God. We won't let go of God until he is going to bless us or answer our prayer. The next thing that we see with uh, revival, and these are not limited to these, but these are some things that are common, is a, def is a, in, um, a defining focus. And I think prayer helps us focus on the things that God has said to take him at his word, to act as though the answer of God is coming. And so defining focus, it's like a flashlight versus a laser. It's, it's piercing through our darkness and we're saying, Lord, we're going to focus on you until the answer comes. We're not going to focus on the answer. We're going to focus on you. We're going we're to focus on the results of your work in our lives first rather than the work of God externally. We see that uh, the fear of God is a huge part of revival where God wants our heart to be fertile and broken up so that there's a new fear of the Lord that comes into our life. And we are touched by the things that touch God. I, I think, you know, as we look at our society today, it's not a reflection of government. Uh, it's a reflection of the church. And this is why as a church we are so privileged to be alive and fervent and very active in these days as active listeners, as active doers of the work of God. Why? Because the message is everything. The purity of our message, that's the seed. That's the seed as we speak it in people's lives. As our environment today is very much disrupted, people are panicking and anxious and they're, they're restless, they're unsure, and God says, turn to me and I'll use that to plant many seeds, plant many uh, many potentials of hope. Well, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. This is what we want to have a cultivated attitude in 2021. Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what are you saying? Let me embrace it, confess it. We see repentance as a, as a beautiful act of grace in, in a revival. Repentance, turning from our wicked ways. And this happens only as Christ turns us because of his goodness in Romans 2.4. So think about that, repentance, a turning and agreeing with God, a changing of the mind, a changing of the direction. These are all ingredients for God's breath to be breathed in again to revive the dead, to revive the dying, and to remake the broken. Well, there's so much we could say uh, about revival today, uh, but it starts with a personal revival. It starts with a personal revival. In Acts 3.19, we see an amazing verse. And I want to encourage us today. Let's not think, oh, you know, you know, you know, we've been waiting so long. You know, when is it going to happen? It's like maybe someone waiting for the promise of the Messiah. But the three wise men, what were they doing? They knew the time of his visitation. They were studied. They were prepared. And when the star came up in the east, they knew that it was God and God's message. You know, it's interesting. They knew more about it than the people there in Bethlehem. Very few knew about the promise of Micah 5.2. And this is what I think about our nation. I think about our day and age today. We have great hope. We do not mourn as though that they, uh, we do not mourn as they that do not have hope. So no matter what you're facing today, God is using that to bring us deeper. God is using that to to bring and add something that we do not yet have, or he wants to intensify it or magnify it, wants to bring in intimacy, wants to bring in faith. He wants to bring in boldness in this day of judgment. And I was listening to Billy Graham last night, and, and it's, I love hearing his messages. Uh, you know, one thing he said, he says, if God does not discipline America, then he has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's kind of a sobering thought. And nobody wants discipline in their lives, but if a person is going in a direction or if a nation is going in a direction of pride, of their own self-seeking, their own self-interest, their own self-ambitions, God is saying, I must redirect. If you do not hear my words, if you do not hear the prophet's words, if you do not hear that I'm speaking every day, as it says in Proverbs, the words of wisdom are speaking every day, Proverbs 7 and Proverbs 9. 
God has to bring in a disruption. He has to bring in something that will shake us out of our complacency. Well, Acts 3.19, I love this because as we have a personal revival, that will lead to corporate revival and eventually national revival. But think about our, what's our business today. Our, our business is personal revival. It's like a match. You strike the match. It has one little flame. But you put that near dry embers or you put that near other matches or you put that towards other combustible agents, it will ignite. It will explode. It will catch fire and travel. And this is what the presence of God does in our life. This is what the power of the word does in our life. And 319 says, repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. This is a day and age to be refreshed, isn't it? If we're looking outside without eyes of faith, these are scary times. These are uh, restless times, anxious times. But we're not going to just have short-sightedness. We're not just going to look down at the plow and watch the, 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 the earth being grinded up. We could, and we could be like, oh my goodness, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of mess. There's dirt flying. There's all kinds of chaos, seemingly. But no, we're going to look beyond the plow, because that's revival follows the plow, as Tozier said, and we're going to watch the seed being put in its place put in its place, put in its place. And we're going to sow water and there'll be a harvest. Why? Because we're going to be receiving the sunlight, receiving the rain, receiving the nurture and minerals of the earth. This is our privilege today. No matter where we are today, uh, raising a family, going to work, uh, working from home, uh, just guarding our heart and mind, guarding what is sacred in our heart. And that's the seed of the word of God. Otherwise, the birds come and take it. The sun scorches it. It doesn't take root, and the thorns come around and choke it, Matthew 13. And then what happens? Uh, that plow, there's a, there's a plowed field, but there's no harvest. There's no fruit. Well, Acts 3.19, these times of refreshing come from the Lord. So maybe God's put something in your heart. Be refreshed in it. Remember what the Lord has promised you. Focus on it. Have a defining focus. That's my prayer for 2021. Have a defining focus. Focus on it. Don't just glance at it and just say, oh, that's a nice thought, but sit with it. Travail with it. Have a prevailing prayer life. Have something where you do not let the Lord go. Be near. Don't be far. Don't be distant. Don't follow afar off like Peter did. But in John 6, 63 through 66, hold fast to the words of life. These are great days for preparation for revival in our country. Revival, salvations, renewal uh, to ignite the church as the church, as we see persecution and acts, mobilize the church. Are we mobile? Are we ready? Are we ready to move? Are we prepared? Or are we looking in Ecclesiastes 11 at the, at the clouds? You know, if we look at the clouds, one through six, of, of Ecclesiastes 11, we will not sow. We will have an excuse. We will somehow blame another. We'll be, we'll be intoxicated by the cosmic media that is so uh, Marxist in many ways in their communication. And we can be so distracted with all these things. But God will say, listen, I will give you wisdom on how to speak. I'll give you wisdom on how to go. I will give you wisdom on how to be a worker in my fields in John chapter 9 while it's still day. Let's be busy with the work of God. Let's build our own heart in that fertile place. Let's be receivers of the word of God and have that personal revival in Amos chapter 8, 11 through 13. Let's not have a famine of the word. Let's not put it down and pick up something else and just kind of try to make things in our own way, you know, uh, you know, there's a statement about working smarter and not harder. Well, when God gives you wisdom in, in, in spiritual intelligence and a spiritual IQ in these days, uh, God teaches us how to be wise as serpents, yet innocent as a dove. And these are, these are important, important thoughts today as we consider revival in our nation. You know, there's many more things I could say, but maybe that's enough. I could just leave you with these thoughts. Times of refreshing. Are you being refreshed 
you know, after a hot day, a cold glass of iced tea, that refreshes the soul. How are you refreshed? How are you encouraged today? Get with the Bible. Get with the people of God. Get on a, a media platform that builds your life, that builds your faith, that builds your, your uh, faith vision, your heart vision. Let's believe God for 2021 for big things. Because you know what? Revival follows the plow. Revival follows the plow. God has so much to do in this country as things seemingly are, uh, well, not seemingly, they're very obviously being globalized to the one world government, everything being set up for the Antichrist. It's very clear in Revelations 12 and 13. But we can be busy with the work of God. We can take as many people with us as possible for the gospel's sake, for the gospel's sake. So be refreshed today. Don't be short-sighted. Lord, help me not to be short-sighted. Let, take the long look, and that happens as we took look at the up look. gives us the right outlook, but we take that long look and say, all things are for our sake. The seed is going into broken, soft ground, and the clumps of unbelief, the clumps of fear, the clumps of anxiety, the clumps of nervousness, restlessness, discouragement, even depression, God's saying, I'm going to grind those down and I'm going to faithfully plant my seed in your life in Psalm 37. And we're going to testify and rejoice in his faithfulness. And no matter what happens uh, today or any day for that matter, it's amazing what a day will bring. But we can have hope, not hope in our, in, uh, in our future necessarily, but we have hope in the one that holds our future. And I'll just close with this thought. I, Pastor Schaller said this to me years ago, back in the mid-90s, mid and I'll never forget it. He says, our future is as bright as the promises of God. And I just want to leave you with that today. Our future is as bright as the promises of God. So what's the promise that you're fel fellowshipping with today? What is that promise? Fellowship with it. Be refreshed in it. Turn to it. Speak it. Confess it out loud. Live like it's already happening. And don't be distracted today by all of the, the Goliath shouting, all of the uh, distractions that want to pull us away. But as we allow the plow to do its work and the seed is dropped in, we, and as Ecclesiastes 11, 7 and 8 says, we do not know where the harvest will be uh, flourishing, but it will flourish in your life and other lives and in our nation as many turn to righteousness. Uh, we're refreshed and we have a, uh, an, uh, a clear mind thinking about and a strong heart knowing that God is ultimately in control. So precious Father, thank you today. Lord, bring, bring revival into our lives. Bring revival into our hearts again. We want to learn it again. We want to unlearn fear, anxiety, and all of these other things that are short-sightedness, but we want to relearn or learn all over again in a fresh perspective. We want new wine in new wineskins today. Lord, thank you today. We give you the glory, asking that you do a new thing in our heart today. Revive those areas that are dead or dying and bring new life, new growth. And we trust you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.